in in earlier lecture i presented risk diagram which is just shown over here and there i have told that we will be considering diagramic representation of material and heat balance in that lecture we have considered material balance and as a result of material balance we could arrive at the equation nob plus o by fex where x is the type of oxide for example if it is fe2o3 then F o by fe is 1.5 if it is fe3o4 then it is 4 by 3 and so on so that is the way o by fex so this equation we could obtain as a result of material balance only and in the subsequent uh, development of this lecture i have shown that the same equation can be represented in the form of the uh, diagram and we have seen that and we have solved some problem now in a continuation of that lecture what we would like to do today we would like to develop heat balance of the glass furnace iron making then we will combine material and heat balance and try to represent the material and heat balance in the form of a diagram so as such first of all we have to see basics of heat balance and for that purpose i am again considering a very simplified system so considering a simplified system now with simplified system i mean that we are not considering say the iron ore in itself or coke or pig iron what we are considering a simplified system that is we are considering we are charging fe2o3 plus carbon this is our burden and the product which we are considering in order to understand the basics of risk diagram when we incorporate heat balance into it so product we are considering we are considering to develop this equation liquid iron pure liquid iron and we are considering also top gas so in a sense our consideration leads to the following heat balance diagram that is a blast furnace so this is the hearth this is the bosch this is the belly though i am not uh, telling this our, my objective is not to tell you the design of the blast furnace and this is what the stack region of the blast furnace this is the stack so for our heat balance what we are considering that on the top we are charging say fe2o3 plus carbon of which we have already did material balance and arrived at an equation the temperature we are considering 298 kelvin because for heat balance the temperature of heat input and heat output they are important so the top gas is also discharging at 298 kelvin and comprise of co co2 and n2 mind you the top what we are considering is a simplified model in actual practice top gas may go at 300 degree celsius or something of that sort in reality you don't charge pure iron oxide you charge iron ore so after developing the simplified model we can add the complexity so that we arrive at a actual blast furnace iron making so we are injecting air and mind you we are injecting air at 298 kelvin and we are discharging here iron liquid and the temperature we are considering 1800 kelvin mind you we are not considering slag at the moment that means we are attempting to understand how the heat balance can be transformed in the form of a equation and we will develop equation such that 
all these say input for example the gang in the iron ore it can be simply added to it slag of the output can be simply added to it and so on so forth so this is the case then the heat balance or we can say enthalpy balance enthalpy balance it can be written in words say enthalpy into furnace enthalpy into furnace per mole of product iron remember i am using per mole of product iron it is not pig iron it is product iron so later on when we add any element to iron then we have to see that we have developed for 1000 kg product iron that will be equal to enthalpy out enthalpy out again per mole of product iron product iron now say enthalpy into the furnace for example if you consider n moles of fe2o3 into its heat of formation that is h0 298 this is for fe2o3 that should be equal to h0 1800 of iron liquid plus the gas consists of n moles of carbon monoxide into its enthalpy value not 298 plus ngco2 into h not 298 where nfe2o3 ngco and ngco2 they are per mole of product iron so now what we can do say we can now bring all our terms which requires heat so in that process what will i do say nfe2o3 into minus h not 298 plus h not 1800 mind you i am considering now the heat demand side all where the heat is demanded for that that will be equal to ngco minus h not 298 plus ngco2 h not 298 so let me consider this equation is number 1 and this equation is number 2 now this side now this side i am considering heat demand and this side i am considering as heat supply now this side correction here it should be minus h not 298 so now i have to find out their values the the, the heat of uh, decomposition all these values so i am giving you certain values so h not 298 fe2o3 that is equal to heat of formation of fe2o3 and that is minus 826000 kilo joule per kg mole fe2o3 similarly h not 298 and similarly h not 298 this is for co2 this is for co so for co2 that is equal to minus 394000 for co it is minus 11000 kilo joule per kg mole co2 and here it is kilo joule per kg mole co and similarly we have to calculate h not 1800 
iron liquid. So, that will be equal to in the thermochemistry lecture, I had already told you how to calculate this thing. So, that value will be 73,000 kilo joule per kg mole iron. Mind you, it is plus. So, if you substitute this value, we will get an equation N F E 2 O 3 into 8 2 6 triple 0 plus 73,000 that is equal to N G C O 111,000 plus N G C O 2 394,000 and let us make this equation number 3. Now, as you recall, I said that N G C O and N G C O 2, they can be related to mole fraction and that is equal to N G C O into X G C O and this will be N G C O 2 into X G C O 2 that can be related with the active carbon N A C is the active carbon 2 minus O by C G where N C A is the moles of active carbon per mole of iron or per kg mole of iron. Similarly, this will be N C A O by C G minus 1. O by C is the ratio of atomic oxygen to, to the moles of carbon. Now, we know that N F E 2 O 3 that is equal to half to produce 1 mole of iron you need half mole of N F E 2 O 3. So, if you substitute all these things say by equation 3, 4 and 5 and noting that means by equations 3, 4 and 5 and noting that if you want to produce 1 mole of iron you need half mole of Fe 2 O 3. So, if you substitute then we will be getting an equation half into 8 2 6 triple 0 plus 73,000 that is equal to N C A. 283,000 O by C G minus 172,000 and this is our equation. Now, let me put it this is equation number 4, this is equation number 5 and let us see this is equation number 6. Uh, now, what we have seen that is equation 6 in fact it is the heat balance. Now, it is a very simplified approach. Simplified approach means we have not considered the gang part of it, we have not considered slack part of it. Now, if you see this particular equation, we note that this particular is the heat demand. This particular side is heat demand and this particular side is the heat supply. This particular side is heat supplied. Now, the heat demand is a variable. Suppose you are sub, you are charging iron ore, then gang slag is coming also out. Then the heat demand is a variable where heat supply is, if it is coming only from carbon, so it is more or less in the absence of any other heat supply. This is a sort of a constant value. So we can put it D, which is the heat demand, which is a variable that is equal to N C A two eighty three thousand. O by C G minus 172,000. So, that is what our starting equation in order to now combine material and heat balance. Now, before I go, I will try to illustrate by taking an example. For example, the C O by C O 2 ratio, let me take an example say C O by C O 2 ratio in a top gas 
of a blast furnace which is charged with pure Fe2O3 that is equal to 1. When we are using pure Fe2O3 is a burden for blast furnace iron making. The carbon supply rate in this example carbon supply rate which includes carbon in pig iron equal to 5 weight percent that is carbon for combustion and carbon for pig iron is also coming from this and carbon supply rate is 500 kg per ton of product iron. Okay? This is what the problem. Now, we will not know what is the enthalpy supply. What is the enthalpy supply in kilojoule per kg mole of product iron? Assuming assumption number 1 that air blast it enters at 298 Kelvin and top gas it exits also at 298 Kelvin. This is our assumption. So, as per the previous equation I said that the enthalpy supply S that is equal to N C A 283,000 O by C G minus 172,000 that was the equation. Now, from the CO2 ratio we have to find out the value of O by C. Now, we know that X CO upon X CO2 that is equal to already I have given this expression 2 minus O by C g upon O by C g minus 1 and that is equal to 1. So, we can solve from here it will come O by C g that will come out to be equal to 1.5. Now, we would like to know only N C A. So, for N C A that is equal to N C i minus C by F e you recall from my earlier lecture. That means, active carbon is the total carbon N C i is the total carbon supply per mole of iron and C by F e is the moles of carbon which is dissolved in iron. So, you can calculate. So, N C i that will be equal to 2.33 because N C i is simply 500 upon 1200 into 17.9 we take 1000 kg iron. So, 17.9 with the kg moles of iron and C by F e that will become minus 2, 0.25 because carbon is 5 percent and for 5 percent carbon you have 53 kg as carbon because 1000 kg is the pure iron. So, 53 kg becomes the carbon in iron. So, 53 by 12 by 17.9 gives you 0.25. So, N C A that is equal to 2.08. So, if I substitute the value of O by C G and N C A into the supply equation, then enthalpy supply I can easily calculate enthalpy supply that will come equal to 525200 kilo joule per kg mole. Mind you, it is not pig iron per kg mole of product iron that is an important thing. Now, here I said that we can do certain modification. Now, what we have done? We have taken here pure iron as a product. right? Now, let us, let us calculate heat demand now. Let us calculate now heat demand again in kilo joule per kg mole of iron when condition A we have pure Fe 2 O 3 as earlier supplied at 298 Kelvin, pure carbon again at 298 Kelvin and uh, liquid iron 
liquid iron at 1800 Kelvin. So, we can calculate heat demand from the earlier equation and the heat demand that will be equal to half 826 half is coming because 1 mole of iron require half mole of AP203 plus 73000. So, this value is equal to 486000 kilo joule per kg mole product iron. Now, let us take case B. Now, in the case B what we are doing let now iron contains 5 percent carbon. Iron contains now 5 percent carbon. Neglect heat of mixing. Neglect heat of mixing. Now, I am showing that how the simplified model can be tuned to the actual condition. Condition number 2 iron contains now 5 percent carbon that is called pig iron. So, first of all we will calculate C by F E that is moles of iron in metal that will be equal to again 53 divided by 12 into 17.9 and that is equal to 0 0.25 kg mole per kg mole of product iron per kg mole of iron. Now, what we have to add it over here in the heat demand side. We have calculated for pure iron. Now, since carbon is there, so we have to add into enthalpy of carbon. So, that way uh, it becomes the enthalpy supply for iron 5 percent carbon. Race conditions are same liquid iron 1800 Kelvin, Fe2O3 carbon they are all at 298 Kelvin. All that we have to add enthalpy of carbon. So, enthalpy of carbon that is equal to 23.5 T minus 11800 again kilo joule per kg mole. So, I substitute T is equal to 1800 Kelvin and I calculate now. So, this value will be coming 7625 kilo joule per kg mole carbon. So, enthalpy D that will be equal to 493625 because all that we have to add 7625 into 486000. This is what I mean by modification. Now, still another modification let us come closer to the what blast furnace is producing. Now, blast furnace is producing silicon and manganese also. Now, let us consider C part say iron liquid it contains 1 percent manganese and 1 percent silicon in addition to Five percent carbon. That is what we are case C. We are doing. We are simply modifying the case B, where we are telling the liquid iron it contains one percent manganese and one percent silicon. That is, we are now approaching to the actual case. Now, what we have to do here? First of all, we have to calculate M n upon F e. Now again, one thousand kg of product iron. So M n by so manganese and silicon that will become. 10.75 kg. So, kg per mole you can calculate that will be 0 0.011 kg mole m n per mole of iron. Similarly, we have to calculate for silicon. So, silicon upon F e that will be equal to 0 0.021 kg mole per kg product iron. So, what we have to do now on the heat demand side in the case B we have added enthalpy for carbon. Now, in the case C we have to add enthalpy required for silicon because it will raise from 298 to 1800 Kelvin and enthalpy required to raise the temperature of manganese from 298 to 1800 Kelvin. So, enthalpy of manganese enthalpy of manganese we need and we need enthalpy of silicon on the liquid iron side. So, that is given by 
48.6 T minus 10,000 kilo joule per kg mole and silicon 27.2 T plus 40,000. So, for our case the enthalpy of manganese that is 852 kilo joule per kg mole of iron and in this critical case it is 1868 kilo joule per kg mole iron. Now, this is not the uh, total solution. Now, you have to think how silicon and manganese are coming. For that iron ore must have SiO2 and MnO2. So, for SiO2 and MnO2 what you have to do? You have to add their heat of the composition of SiO2 and MnO2. So, that is what I mean by the modification. So, on the demand side in addition to enthalpy of manganese and enthalpy of silicon heat of decomposition of SiO2 and MnO2 has to be added because otherwise silicon and manganese from where they are coming? They are coming from the gang part of the iron ore. So, delta S naught SiO2 and delta S naught MnO2 that is equal to minus 901000 kilo joule per kg mole and MnO2 is minus 518.478 kilo joule per kg mole. Say 0 0.021 kg mole of silicon will require 0 0.021 kg mole of SiO2. Similarly, manganese also. So, if you calculate all, all that you have to multiply by the kg mole of silicon equal to kg mole of SiO2 to this SiO2 quantity, MnO quantity, then we get heat demand then we get heat demand that is equal to 494000 that we have calculated for case B plus 852 for enthalpy of manganese plus 1868 for enthalpy of silicon plus 1892 required heat of decomposition for SiO2 reduction and plus 5064 for MnO2 reduction to manganese. So, this will be total 521305 kilo joule per kg mole of iron. So, that is what I mean the addition of the terms and to come closer to the actual case. Remember, we started with the pure liquid iron pure Fe2O3. Now, with this addition we have come closer to the what is happening in actual blast furnace iron making. We brought SiO2 of the gang into picture, we got we brought MnO2 of the of the gang part of the ore into the picture, we we made now uh, liquid iron and we added silicon, manganese and carbon. So, that is what the by I, I mean to say that heat demand can always be updated according to the actual situation. Now, after understanding this what we can do now, we can now modify or we can now modify the material balance equation to incorporate heat balance equation also. Now, you know the material balance equation you recall material balance equation that equation was N O B plus O by F E X that is equal to N A C O by C G that was let us say equation number 7. Now, you know say demand should be equal to supply there should be no doubt on this. So, we know that demand D that is equal to S that is equal to N C A. <coughs> 283000 O by C G minus 172000 let us make this equation 8. Now, say by 7 and 8 we can write down the equation N O B plus I am rearranging and writing in this particular form plus O by F E X minus D upon 283000 
that is equal to n c a 172,000 upon 283,000. Let us take equation number 9. Now, say if O by F e x, if O by F e x and D are specified, and d are specified. That means, if now for a given situation O by F e x and demand are specified, then equation 9 which is our model equation which represent combined material and heat balance, it has requires the specification of N O B and N C A. It requires the specification of N O B and N C A either one if you do it, then we can calculate the variable which we require to calculate. Say, if N O B is specified, N C A can be calculated or N C A can be specified, N O B can be calculated. If both are not specified, then we can proceed to the graphical solution and let us see that. Before that, let me illustrate by taking a simple example. So, let us take for pure Fe 2 O 3, we take a case which we are taking pure Fe 2 O 3 iron liquid at 1800 Kelvin N O B I am taking 1.41. Then we can find out the coke requirement. So, we have to find out coke requirement. We have to find out coke requirement and the case in question are producing iron which is equal to 5 percent carbon. Iron it contains rather let me put it iron, it contains 5 percent carbon, it is not a pure iron, it contains 5 percent carbon. So, let us calculate the amount of coke that will be required. Amount of coke required means you have to calculate the active carbon plus the carbon which is entering into pig iron both, because the carbon source of carbon for both is, uh, is the coke. So, if we do that what we have to do? First of all, we calculate C by F e, we have already we have calculated in earlier cases, for the same it is coming 0 0.25, then N C i that is equal to C by F e m plus N C a. So, let us take it now and substitute the value that is 1.41 plus 3 by 2 minus the demand for iron uh, 5 percent carbon we are already calculated that is minus 494,000 upon 283,000 that is equal to N C A 172,000 upon 283,000. So, from here we can calculate easily N C A that will be equal to 1.91 and we know the equation that is N I C that is the total carbon per mole per mole of iron that will be equal to 0 0.25 plus 1.91 that will be equal to 2.16. Therefore, carbon supply required will be 464 kg of input carbon per mole of product iron. That is what uh, I wanted to illustrate how to use this equation and you have seen that how easily this equation can be updated according to the prevailing condition in blast furnace iron making. So, now since we have the equation it uh, in our hand we can make use of the equation. We have transformed material and heat balance into the form of an equation. We can plot it now and for a particular blast furnace operation, we can plot the curve and see that our operation follows that particular uh, line or whatever we get after the plot. So, that is the advantage of this risk diagram. So, let us see now say graphical representation. graphical 
representation of combined heat and material balance combined material and heat balance now i'll be writing down the equation in the form in which it can be plotted now the way of plotting is same as it was done for material balance only so we can write down now the equation in the following way say o upon fex minus d upon 283000 minus n o b it is minus that is equal to n c a 172000 upon 283000 minus 0 So this equation now same is y two minus y one that is equal to m x two minus x one. That means if I plot y two minus y one against x two minus x one, the slope of the line will give me the value of n c a. So slope of the plot. Say y two minus y one versus x two minus x one. That will be equal to n c a, and from n c a I can determine the value of active carbon and all other variables. Now let us see if we plot. Say if we, if if those things are plotted on O by C. And O by F E X S. The slope of the line naturally it is a straight line. The slope of the line will pass through the point O by C equal to zero, and O by F E that is equal to minus and O P. And O by C, that is equal to 0.61, which is the value of 172,000 upon 283,000. When O by F E, that is equal to O by F E x minus d upon 283,000. So now, let us plot it now. Say we know that for F E 2 O 3. When Fe two O three is a part of the iron ore that is iron oxide, then O by Fe is one point five. O by Fe is one point five. So now, if we plot it, that this is the plot. Side is zero. I am plotting here O by Fe, and here. i am putting o by c naturally o by c equal to 1 that is co and co2 is 2 o by c 2 and it is here say 0 this is o by fe for fe 2 o 3 it is 1.5 so there is certain important thing to note now say demand is fixed for a particular raw material now if we fix for example our d for pure fe2o3 we have calculated 486000 when we are charging pure fe2o3 and pure liquid iron was the product now into this let us add say some though we have to calculate that value but for the sake of illustration we can calculate some 100000 kilo joule that is the heat Because of the gang, a presence of gang has to be fluxed, 
the we have to calculate the amount of slag that is produced and accordingly heat has to be supplied. So, for the present case I am just taking that 100,000 kilo joule per kg mole of iron is the amount of heat that is required to form a slag. So, my demand will be this equal to this one. So, O by C now that is equal to 172,000 upon 283,000. So, this value is equal to 0 0.6. So, O by C was 0.61. Now, I have to find out O by A phi. Now, O by A phi that is equal to O by A phi x minus D upon 283,000. So, O by A phi x is 1.5 minus 586,000 upon 283,000. So, this will be minus 0.57. So, let us take it now this point somewhere here is is let us say 0.61 and this side is plus and this side of course is minus. So, here somewhere let us take it 0. Point minus 0.57. So, this becomes a fixed point for this particular blast furnace which we have said it is charged with pure Fe2O3 liquid iron is produced which is some heat value. So, for this operation of blast furnace iron making this particular point which I will say A and the point A it has the coordinates 0.61 and minus 0.57. So, now what is to be done we know about the value of NCA we have to know. So, NCA we can calculate. NCA that is equal to 600 upon 12 into 17.9 this is equal to 2.55. So, that means now the slope of the line which is passing through the point A it should have slope equal to 2.55 because NCA is the slope of the line. So, if I do that then this is the slope of the line which is equal to 2.5 and this particular point if I say B then B the value of B that is equal to O by C G which is the top guess analysis correspond to O by A phi x and this particular point is 0 and minus N O B and the slope of the line which we fixed by calculating NCA since we are knowing NCA. So, this is equal to 2.55 that is how you will be representing the graphical representation. Now, in this particular problem the value of B that accidentally it comes O by C G if you plot properly. So, it will come equal to 1.42 and from this one can calculate X C O and X C O 2. So, that will be around 58 percent and here it will be 42 percent. So, that is how what I mean to say a graphical representation of the combined material and heat balance. All that it can be modified for the actual case though I try to illustrate, but well depending on the heat demand one can illustrate and what is what is this particular diagram says is that for a particular operation this line is now is available to you. Now, what we can suggest we can make certain improvements So this point again I will show by the point A. So, now here I will give you few some one or two exercises that you can solve yourself. So, I will give you the problem number 1 the a blast furnace operator a blast furnace operator he wishes to check his blast metering device. He is supplying air blast and is measuring the air blast by certain device and he is thought that he, there is some doubt. So, blast measuring device on the basis of gas analysis because this value is known to him and co-create. 
he knows both the values. Now, what he want determine analytically determine analytically oblique graphically that means, draw a line and determine the n o b value the n m cube of dry air for the condition when the ore is contains pure Fe 2 O 3 hot metal you have 5 percent carbon amount is 1000 tons coke 88 percent dry 88 percent carbon on dry basis and 700 tons the total requirement although it is a very poor operation, but does not matter. Top gas composition top gas composition is a percent C O volume percent upon percent C O 2 is given to you 1.2. So, this is one particular problem you can you can try to calculate and the answer volume that will be equal to 2.3 into 10 to the power 6 meter cube will be the answer. I will give you one more problem, so that you can practice it. Another problem that I will give you the exit gas composition, the exit gas composition from a Fe 2 O 3 charge furnace is 24 volume percent C O 22 percent volume percent of course, C O 2 and 54 percent nitrogen all are on volume percent. So, the air blast is 1400 meter cube per 1000 kg iron hot metal contains 5 percent carbon. So, calculate a active carbon in kg per 1000 kg of product iron b calculate total carbon. So, you know how to calculate the uh, procedure already I have said. So, the answer would be the total carbon is 400 and 84 kg and active carbon is 431 kg. So, with this two problems and the risk diagram, I have finished or I have covered sufficient and I have given sufficient information on blast furnace iron making and its representation on the diagram. For the detailed, if you want to go, you can consult the book of say uh, Davenport. Ital on blast furnace iron making. You can also consult the book Ghosh and Chatterjee Iron Making and Steel Making. So, with this I finish the lectures on reduction smelting as a unit process. In the next lecture we will see the next unit process that is converting.